All right, fellas, welcome back to the Complete Husband's Handbook Podcast. My name is Daniel, and it's about two days-ish before Valentine's Day, and we got to talk about something. And it's something most men don't typically talk about. And it's about courting the one you're with. Now, of course, courting or courtship is a is an old way of saying you're dating someone, engaged to someone, then you finally get married to someone. It's the whole process. Where now folks say, oh, well, we're, we're talking and then we're seeing each other and it's Facebook official and all this other nonsense. Courtship is a process. And believe it or not, fellas, it continues after you get married. Now, of course, you know, Valentine's Day, it's all about the romance and the rose petals and the chocolates and the, I hate to keep quoting Beauty and the Beast, but the promise is we don't intend to keep. But in reality, um, Valentine's Day can actually work in our favor. But I want to get the elephant that's in the room out before we really dive into this. Fellas, sex isn't romance, okay? It can augment a relationship. It can bring a couple closer together. It can allow us to be gods in the sense that we are able to create life and build a family. And where all that is well and good, and yes, it can strengthen a relationship, sex does not a relationship make. And if you think that, I hate to break it to you, man or woman, you're in for a long, lonely road. So, now we got that out of the way. You know, someone once told me, and I believe it was my father. I was uh, in my mid-twenties at the time. And he told me, he was like, you know, women want conversation. Or most women want conversation. The way most men want sex. And it took me years, and then after being married, that I realized how true that actually was. That women want us to be engaged with them. It doesn't mean we're, you know, stuck to them. It doesn't mean we do everything they do and they do everything we do. But to actually show some form of, I guess a better way to put it is give a damn. Like we, they, they want us to, they want to feel that we put them first, that they are a priority. And yes, working long hours, shifts we don't really want to work, you know, busting our butts day in and day out, all of that is a grand gesture. But on the daily, they want to feel appreciated. They don't want to get lost in the shuffle of life. And so, we as men really need to understand what what someone coined the phrase of the hallmark effect. And we need to send. Of course, people don't send notes anymore, but little text messages. Hey, babe, how's it going? Hey, saw you didn't sleep well. I hope you're okay today. Or if they're in the middle of that particular time of month, um, do you need anything? Do you need me to, you know, I'm more than willing to stop at the store on the way home. Do you need me to get anything for you? Or just show up with their favorite candy or sweets or, you know, food or whatever. Or just sit sit there and shut the hell up while she's, while she's unloading you know, stress. Women do hold a lot in. And they look at a lot of different angles. And women do stress a lot. Um, these past few months, being laid off and now trying to find work, um, my wife really holds back a lot of how she feels because she's worried I'm going to get stressed out. And so she bottles that up because she doesn't want me to get stressed out, which in turn will stress her out, which, you know, it's a vicious cycle. But women want to know that they're a priority. And it doesn't take not but a couple of seconds to send a quick text or to, you know, just check on them, 
see if they're okay, if they need anything, or if there's something coming up, um, some presentation or event that you know they're going to be at, you know, give them a word of encouragement. Hey, I hope everything goes well. Breathe, you got this. You know, just, just something. Something to let them know we're thinking about them. Now, I'm not saying if you're the, if you're not the particularly lovey-dovey type, that you all of a sudden become, you know, uh, some kind of a perfume commercial <laughs> where you show up with a dozen roses and chocolates and stuff. But really try to find a way to connect with the one you're with. And it's those smaller gestures throughout the year that she'll remember more than getting nothing from you most of the year. And then you having to quote-unquote make up for it on Valentine's Day. I recently read an article where a woman said, um, I would prefer to spend time in the kitchen with my husband, just talking and cooking dinner, than to go out for a fancy dinner. Or I would prefer to go do something with him than to have some grand gesture. So time is a commodity we as men can use to invest in our wives and those we love. Now the next thing, guys, is dating keeps love alive. When you're married to somebody or even engaged, you know, planning a wedding is stressful as hell. But when you're married, we tend to focus on, okay, we've gotten married, what's the next step in the plan? You know, usually it's a house or kids or further career, or whatever the case may be. But remember that your relationship, that at the end of the day, the kids move away. They get married, have their own kids. But it's just going to be you and her until death, really. So remember to keep that relationship alive. And dating when you're married does that. Now, when my wife and I first got married, we didn't have a whole lot of money. So our shopping would be our date. We would go to whatever store we had to go to at the time, get whatever you know food we need. We would walk up and down the aisles, even the aisles we really didn't need to be on. And we would talk about the day, her work, my work, projects we wanted to do, things we saw, movies we wanted to see, you know, things like that. So that when it came time to go to the movies, when we had enough money or we had time off, because I worked nights and she worked days, we never had the same days off, but it was easier to connect instead of this, you know, ships that pass in the night and then, oh, hey... You know, we're married, supposedly. So, keep that in mind. That as you get married, you're still courting your wife. So, please, for the love of God, or whatever deity you follow, whether it's a giant spaghetti monster or Cthulhu, date your wife. Take her out. Show the world that, yeah, you're, you're still in love with the one you married. Now, I recently read an article about, you know, keeping the love alive. And one of them said, you know, men like their trappings. And let's be honest, fellows, we do. Whether, you know, we're, we're, we're into cars, sports, books, anime, fantasy, swords, and whatever. We like our trappings. We like to, you know, show, <laughs> kind of show off to people. Hey, this is my thing, or hey, look at this, or hey, what's up? And in the, and in the article, I wish I could remember who actually wrote it, but the woman said, you know, a man's desire to show off his accomplishments can work in a man's favor, especially throughout the year. Take your wife on a date once a week once every two weeks 
but really show her she is the most important thing. Now, of course, when kids come into play, things will get complicated because you have to find a sitter and you have to find, you know, rides and, and all that other stuff, but the effort will be remembered. I promise you it will. And it's always good to show the wife, hey, you know, yeah, I'm going out with the boys, but remember last week, you know, I spent time with you. And as as you continue as you continue in your marriage relationship, you're gonna slowly realize the way every husband does. That yes, yeah, spending time with the boys is important, but spending time with your wife is more important. And yes, church obligations and community work and all that stuff is great. But at the end of the day, when the dust settles, who do you go home to? You go home to your wife. So again, fellas, for the love of God, put your woman first. Do those small gestures. Hold her hand whenever y'all are waiting in line. You know, my wife, still to this day, will walk from the car to the store and she'll, she'll hook her arm in mine, and instinctually, something snaps in my brain, and I didn't realize I was doing this until she told me. I stood a little straighter. I slowed my step. My chest went out a, a bit more. And had she not told me, I wouldn't have realized it. But I do. Because, number one, obviously, I'm on quote-unquote protection mode. More importantly, number two... I want her to see me as a man. And so by doing so, I'm standing taller. My chest is out. I tend to suck in my gut a little bit more. I'm walking with purpose, with power. Why? Because she's beside me. Now, <clears throat> another thing. Hello, excuse me, I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting over cold here. But um, another thing to, to remember is that women want to celebrate us as much as we want to celebrate them. And where Valentine's is a day that, you know, we share together. When it comes to our birthdays, and I'm going to go on this in, in another video, but let your wife spoil you. I have a tendency, and I'm sure other men do, where I don't want a big hustle and bustle for my birthday. I told my wife last year, just take me out to dinner and I'm fine. And we go out to a great Chinese place not, not too far from here. And we spend time together. But she wants to do more. And, you know, the past two years have sucked for everybody. But let your woman spoil you. If she asks you what you want for your birthday, you know, pick a couple of things. Stuff that you actually will use. You know, books you'll read, tools you'll get, you know, tools you'll use, um, m movies you actually want to watch, things you'll actually enjoy. Because nobody likes buying someone a gift, and then they never use it. So when your wife asks you, hey babe, what do you want for your birthday? Be honest, be sincere, let her spoil you. So that when it comes time for her birthday... You can spoil her. Now, I'm not saying she's going to bring you to that ranch in Texas that lets you, you know, shoot tanks. Although that would be pretty cool. <laughs> but, you know, just let her show you off to the world the way you want to show her off to the world. And again, I guarantee you that your relationship will be better and you'll be able to grow together because you're spending time together more than a quick kiss goodnight and you realize you got to work overtime in the morning. So fellas, if we can do these few things, those sweet gestures or the hallmark effect, you know, the notes or the texts, the calls just to check, the, you know, bringing coffee, cooking with her, you know, things like that, those little thinking of you gestures and investing our time which is which is a proper commodity because we've only got so much of it when we put our wife first 
they're going to remember that because we know how long of a memory women have. And fellas, if we can remember, courtship if it is a lifelong pursuit. We put that first. We make women, we, we make our woman the priority in our life. And I can guarantee you, your marriage will grow by leaps and bounds. I'll catch y'all on the next episode.